Hey, welcome everybody to the flip side of leadership. Happy Thursday to everybody out there today. Uh, and super excited today, as you saw on the post, you saw that we had uh, the director's edition today. So with the announcement coming last week or maybe a week and a half ago of uh, Lion's Guide adding uh, these two stellar guys that get to talk to you today, uh, I got to get them on. So today I am happy to announce uh, that I get Jay Teagues on. What's up, my friend? How are you? I'm doing great. It's uh, it's great to be here, and uh, I'm excited, man. It's almost like a joke. Right? We've got a Marine, a Navy guy, and an Army guy walking to a bar. <laughs> I know we're gonna we're gonna find an airman at some point to do something, and then we're gonna have the 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 extra joke about it. But um, listen, for those who don't know or have been living under a rock, uh, Jay's the performance development director. I ended up uh, taking over the leadership development director for for Lions Guide, and, and we're just excited to to as you can hopefully tell. We're excited to to be here and to be able to kind of give what we believe, I think, both of us as really uh, human performance, right? When we look at it in the sense of saying development for yourselves in, in a couple different areas that I think we all agree, myself, you and Dale, it all blends together, right? In some way, shape, or form, these all kind of blend together. In order to be a good leader, you got to be a high performer, and and to own a business, you got to you got to have that business acumen as well. And so, uh, those are all together. So today, we're going to get a chance to talk a little bit about uh, Jay's uh, high performance coaching curriculum that he does a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about how that kind of blends into everyday leadership because there's definitely some overlap in it when you start to get to the different levels. Um, and then I think at the end, I, I want you to give a little bit about you so that my viewers on here can and the people who watch this later on can can really get to know a little bit about Jay and and and, and kind of pair off that. Sound like a plan, my friend? Um, sounds great to me, bro. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's talk about it. So you you give a a course right for yourself, which is the high performance coaching course that you do. So tell me, give me a little bit of an overview about it before we dive into it. So I'm, I'm a certified high performance coach. Okay. It's the same program that Dale's affiliated with. In fact, that's, that's how we, that's how we cross paths. A lot of synergy, both being military guys. He was talking about doing hard things and endurance running. And that's exactly what I do. So we instantly clicked and we've been kind of paralleling each other in, in our work together. He started his podcast. I was the first guest. He's been on my podcast. And we just we just have uh, a passion for for helping others, and he's niched his down specifically for business owners and uh, and leaders, and it was a no brainer. I, I'm still on active duty, and I retire in February. And they have this cool program uh, that didn't exist a long time ago, but fairly re in, in recent history, the Career Skills Program, where you can intern. And so I reached out to Dale, like, man, I would love to come on board and, and do an internship. He's like, you know what? We got space for you, and not only that, we'd love to have you on as the performance development director. I'm like. That's a no-brainer, and uh, seeing the work that you're doing, and like this is this is going to be awesome. So, I, I'm honored to be here. Um, ultimately, though, the uh, you know from a high performance perspective, this is what I've learned uh, in in my career in the military, and I spent 27 years. I've been a high achiever. I have achieved a lot, and I have done a lot, and I've accomplished a lot in all of the roles that I that I have uh, uh, been been given. However. I didn't always manage everything well. Oftentimes, high achievement comes at a cost. Yeah, because yeah. we don't, we don't, it, it's difficult to maintain your energy. So we might sacrifice our health. We might sacrifice our relationships. And that that happened to me. I got to a very low point. I didn't manage well. It, it com combined with I had childhood trauma uh, from a from a very uh, tough upbringing, very much like Dale tells his story. I, I, you know, I had uh, emotional and physical abuse. And then the the trauma that, you know, I, I love the army, but I've had some of my, my best days and worst days. And I've had some trauma that I picked up along the way there. And yeah. I and, and like so so many people, you don't trauma is not, not just exclusive to the military community. You know, everyone is probably chances are everyone has faced stuff. But right. A lot of times we don't do a good job of unpacking these things that can affect our performance. So right. Bottom line is I got to a low point where I had I, I had suicide ideation. And I'm like, okay, I can't live this way. And I can't leave my three daughters without a father. Right. What do I need to do? And it also ended a marriage. I'm like, okay, I've got to fix, I got to, I got to tap out. So I got myself in therapy, started unpacking some of these things. And then on that path though, I was looking at like all of my, my habits. I can perform well at work, 
but I wasn't handling well. I, you know, I, I, I wasn't in a good mood. I sacrificed my health. I sacrificed my relationship. And I knew that that was a recipe for disaster. So I needed to change. Right. And I was still knee deep in my, my career. I still had a long ways to go and I still had some ambition there. Um, but I started changing some of my habits. I started reading and, and I inventoried all of the people that I looked up to, the leaders that inspired me, whether they were leaders that I knew or other leaders, you know, uh, that, uh, that, that were more famous, you know, more well-known. What do they do different? How do they, how do they lead? And how do some of them like make it look so easy? Like they're happy while they're doing that. <laughs> some <laughs> and, of that, that's some like, of that's the outside shell, right? Some of it's like, yeah. Cause it's not, I mean, you got to put on a face at some points, like, yeah. you know, as well as I do, right? Like when you're in command and, and me being a, a, an E9 master, if you know, some days we walk, we're inside the door, we close that door. And I'm like, sir, <laughs> what the F are we doing? Right. Yeah. Like, hold, and we're like, I don't know, master chief, like, got it. Okay. We're ready yeah. to open the door. Yeah, I'm ready. Ready. Okay, good. How's everybody doing? Right. Like, so I get it. Yeah. We all, we all have to put on that face. Yep. And there's a lot of people that are suffering in silence. And I, and I did that. I put on the show. I was really good at playing the character, putting on the show, but inside, like I, it got to a, a point of desperation where I was literally thinking about putting a 45 in my mouth. Like it was that bad. And, and I'm like, I, and I, and I've, and I've, I've known people to take, and I like, I could not, I could not imagine amplifying that. So I'm like, I got to fix myself, you know? Right. And so on this journey, what I've learned is, High performance is different than high achieving. High performance from the High Performance Institute, the, the definition of it is achieving above standard norms consistently for prolonged periods of time while maintaining good health and relationships. And I think that many people in leadership roles, because of the pressure, it takes a lot of energy. It's incredibly demanding. It's challenging. We get so caught up in the role that we begin to sacrifice our own health and our relationships. And we saw it in the military all the time. So many people, they'd make SAR major, but then they'd, they'd be divorced, right? I, I mean, right. I I made the ranks. I got divorced. Well, sure. You, so you do all the work and then, you know, time to retire. The Army continues to roll along. The Navy, the, all the – but you're left there with your bags the, and you've got the no machines, family, right? The machines are going to roll. You find that the very The machine quickly. continues to roll Absolutely. with or without you. 100%. Yep. And that's, I agree. that's very – that's a very – and as, as I'm transitioning, that's that's been a very difficult thing to grasp like – the army doesn't need me as much as I thought it did, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Because you get pumped up. And so for, for everybody listening, Jay and I had a little discussion beforehand and we were talking about it. I was offering, because I've been retired since 19 and at a high level, just like you in command, right? Of, of, of the triad, part of what we call the triad as you guys do too, I'm sure. And you're, you're right. Like, you're like, man, you're so needed within, I have to have you at this billet. Man, you're the guy. You're this, yeah. you're that. And then all of a sudden you're like, I did this skill bridge and I came back for my retirement and it was like, okay, like, thank you for your service. Like we're here, here's your, here's your 45 minutes, like good to go. And then it's like, I mean, I mean, and listen, it's part of the deal. We, I mean, you yeah. don't believe it. I had a MIG pawn. So for us, that's like, you guys have the Sergeant Major of the Army, right? Huge, your number one enlisted person. I had a MIG pawn who I'm good friends with. He literally is from near this hometown, but he lives in Nebraska. Terry Scott. And I said to him, I, I saw him at one of the, the initiation part things. And he was like, and this is straight to do with this. He's like, Keith, I'm a MIG pawn. He's like, Flip, I'm a MIG pawn. He's like, and I, they don't <laughs> like... Sure. I get called once a year to come to the the conference if I want to. Like, he's like, it's not, he's like, so for anyone, like, so, right. I'm, I'm a major, which is right. A diamond and not that you're not right, but it's a diamond. It ends up being a dime a dozen, just like mine is like, a, yeah. you know, for that. So it's, it's, it is, it's humbling. It's it. And I can absolutely see where you get down. And, and by the way, for all of our viewers, Jay and I are going to get on specifically at some point and probably talk about this transition and what it is probably hopefully on do hard things maybe because yeah, it's hard. It, it is one of the, it, it falls right into the realm of, of changing absolutely what you've known. And, and there's some great references. I won't let it out of the bag, but let's, let's get back. Let's get back to your high performance piece. So when you, when you talk about the course and you go through it and you guys all got certain you and you and Dale got certified in it, what are the basics for it? I know there's some levels. Give me a little bit about it. I think it starts off with the core, right? Yeah, there's there's basically like four four um, what do they call them? Four four modules, if you will, and they're broken okay. down into to a variety of sessions. 
just like just like building a, f a house, you got to have a you got to have a good foundation. So the first modules are are really the high performance habits and setting the foundation and the stage for what those are. And uh, there's a there's a webinar and a presentation on the Lions Guide that I did that anyone listening to this, you can actually go uh, and download it. And uh, Dale made a ready sheet, but it's really the, the six pillars of high performance. And in those sessions, that's what we do is we kind of do a deep dive of what those are. And in order to be an effective leader, you've got to be able to lead yourself first. That's kind of what we, we kind of talk about. So we look at basically the six areas are productivity. Are you, do you know what your mission is? And throughout the day, everyday leader, are you in tune with that? And are you engaged with what matters most? Or are you caught up in distraction or busy work? And that could be, you know, are we, are, are you disengaged and spending too much time scrolling TikTok and social media when you're, when you're at work? Are you doing the things that matter or are you doing the things that maybe should be delegated out to someone else um, and, and, and being in alignment with that? And that's difficult to do because it's, it's sometimes we, those lines can be kind of blurred, but Absolutely. it's a reminder of what's most important and are you being focused? And there's, there's the science of high performance and then I call it the art of performance. And really the, 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 the science is like, okay, we can set a timer, we can download an app and we can have, we can have a planning system. And, and that's important. Like what systems and tools are, are you using? And for everyone, they're a little bit different, but the principles are the same. Are you, are you staying, are you staying focused and, and things that, so that's what we kind of do. Like re re-identify, are you in alignment with your mission and are you being productive and, and doing your life's work versus busy work? That's, so that's one area. Okay. The next area is persuasion. As leaders, we need to influence people. We have a vision for the organization. We have a vision for our family. We have a vision for what, what, whatever. We need people uh, to, to, to remind them so they're constantly rowing in that direction. And as a leader, really good leaders, you know, and, and, I, and I recall this from like, you know, the, the generals in the army, like they would have their vision, their talking points. And every time you saw them, the best ones, would constantly remind you of, of what that vision is. The drumbeat. And that what that does is when life gets hard, and it will, and the day-to-day -day grind of being in the trenches, you just remind yourself of what the bigger vision of the organization is so you can keep everyone rolling in the right direction. Let me, also, hey, let me, okay. let me ask yeah. you a quick question about that. <clears throat> Did you feel, and so I think you said this too for, for all of our viewers, you started off from the low ranks as the enlisted, right from the, the, the bottom, and then- Yeah, I started as a brand- a, a private. No, yeah. No, so yeah. E1 and for everybody else, that's like your brandness newest hire all the way now through executive level leadership where you were, you were at command right as in 04. So I guess the question is this, when you were, when it comes to that vision piece of it all, right? Cause we're all, I, we, what we love, Dale loves to call, talk about commander's intent. I call what, what you're talking about. I call brilliant on the basics, which was kind of the Navy Marine Corps version of it, which was, Hey, stick to what you're good at and make sure that's what you're focusing on. Do you feel like you end up like, does promotion almost become po political? Like, so how do you keep it? How do you keep that from not becoming political and not becoming, well, now he's a product of the system, right? Versus a, versus the, no, I, I truly mean it. Like this is, this is really why it's important. How do you, how do you guys, and maybe this is, this isn't maybe to do with the high performance curriculum, but it, it's more about with you, you personally of saying, Hey, like, how do you distinguish that where you don't become, where you keep it, where you're just above political, but still it's got to be drumbeat, right? Because drumbeat works. It shows it yeah. works. How, yeah. how, do you, how do you think you do that? Kind of into your point, the everyday leadership, right? That uh, that I, I'm going to support the, the commander or whoever's in charge, and I'm going to echo their talking points. I have my own talking points, <sighs> but I'm general, I'm going to role model the way, and I'm generally going to care. Uh, for everyone's well-being and, and just remind them and making sure I think that's where it comes down to you could the people that are usually labeled political are the ones that just they they're not engaged with their subordinates good like good points yeah th th that's it's empty it's but empty you know leadership. the people that are and the people yeah. that are engaged and truly care about you like you'll follow them anywhere right. yeah yeah it's who it's coming from that's a great point like when you when you when you know when you're backing it up with substance and like actual engagement that's a that's a great point like we talk about it being on the deck plates you guys probably say something else where um but yeah when you're engaging and and for everybody else too and Jay you can probably attest to this that's also engaging through tele like there's a lot of i've I've gotten questions that I have a client who 
uh, you know, talk, how do I engage somebody in Germany or how do I engage my client, my, my, my coworkers and the people that I lead when it's, it's like this. And I, and I said to her, I said, you know, the best thing I can tell you is, is it's, it's still about engagement. Right. And I think that does resonate to then you end up, you're, you're not hollow, right? It's not yeah, a hollow yeah. that when you do say something that echoes what the vision is and, and you haven't made it up, then it becomes, wow. That, okay. Then that's believable then, you know, like yeah. I, I believe Teague's because he's, you know, it's, it's coming and I know that guy's coming. That, that's a great, that's a, that's a great point for it. Well, and a trick that I would use for that, cause I, I'd had, you know, I've had, I've had uh, organizations where I've had people displaced all over the place. Just in my initial engagement, if I saw them, cause it's very easy in the military to be just business, just everything sure. of our communication is strictly business. I would be, and it, someone run up to me, like maybe even hurried, like, and, and, and like tell, they, they wanted to tell me something important, be like, stop, how are you doing today? Like, are you doing okay? Yeah. And just maybe crack a joke or, Right. Just kind of remind them, like, what we're doing right now, it may appear serious, but no one's shooting at us. Nothing's right. blowing up today. Right. That sense of urgency is oftentimes right. a little bit. But having that human dynamic, like, I genuinely care about you. Okay, what, what do you need to tell me? Let's 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 make it happen, right? Yeah. Um, yeah but it's the great, human great touch. Point. It's genuine yeah. care for your people. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's – and there's an over – like, you can even overdo that at points. Like, like – like I get that it's not all the time I'm doing a good job, right? And you have to be really careful with it of how you do it. And I, and I've 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 mentored people with leadership to say, look, I'm not telling you not to give, you know, you're not giving a coin out every single week. You're not, right? It's a it's a because people then know, well then it it doesn't become, yeah. you know, it, it becomes it, again, you just you can you very easily get trapped into either side of it of becoming hollow or becoming where you've, you know, you, you've, you've given so much that it now just becomes, it yeah. becomes right average. So there's no meaning yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think Everyone gets a, great, a trophy. A great, <laughs> yeah. Those are great points to it. They're great points. Um, so what are the, what are the other ones? I didn't mean to cut you off, but I thought. No, no. Good. So persuasion, getting people to support us, yeah. buy from us, you know, if you're in sales, right. To make the sale, close the deal. So persuasion is a big one. The next one is, is uh, psychology. Like, do I have psychological discipline? when things go sideways, am I going to lose my, lose my composure? Sure. Um, and am I living my truth? Because the, the human dynamic is we have ups and downs. And the reason for personal growth and development is so you can engage in that. So you have, you can detach yourself from your emotions. Cause you know, you know, people out there that, that are just driven emotionally. What was, right. there's a, there's a book Absolutely. that talks about, um, likens your, you have, you got logic brain and then you have emotional brain, but emotional brain is like, your, your brain's like a clown car and the clown is in control. That's the emotional brain. And that's yeah. the one that when someone flips you off in traffic, your instant reaction is to drive them off the road or give them the right. finger. Right. What's right. that about? Right. And being able to detach more. And so having, uh, you know, psychology over your emotions. Um, so you're controlled and composed. The next one is physiology. Like how well are you managing your energy? Energy is more than just exercise and diet. Everyone knows that, but it's also how you manage your stress. Sure. And in addition to, it's also about your presence. Like command, like in the military, and you know this, we really hone in on command presence. Right. Words have meaning. How you articulate that word has meaning. Making eye contact, firm handshakes, you know, before you walk out and see the troops, you know, making sure that you got your posture right and how, you know, you're aware of that. High performing people are very aware of their posture because a lot of our nonverbal communication is in our nonverbal cues. Right. So having that stature inspires confidence um, and, and influence. And so, so how well are you, how well are you maintaining your energy and how do you um, present yourself? And then ultimately um, in, in alignment with, with different kind of presence, presence is the next one, but presence, like, are you engaged in the moment or are you just like in the meeting and you're thinking about, you know, the Kansas city chiefs, and the football game from yesterday, right? <laughs> are, are you engaged and present in the moment? Are you showing up with intention? Are you there or are you distracted and hurried and, and things of that nature? And then ultimately your, your purpose, are you in alignment in your organization in alignment with, with what you're designed to do your, your mission? Are you, are you driven by purpose? Because the further you are away off of your purpose, the more misery that you're going to have in your life. And so those are the six pillars that we focus in on uh, with that, with that core session. And ultimately it's a reminder throughout all of the sessions. Cool. That I, I think <clears throat> these are, 
there's a lot. We're going to talk about crossover in the end from everyday leadership to high performance, but I, the, there's a lot, I mean, there's a ton of crossover. There's, there's a yeah, ton absolutely. of crossover from it all. And I think I love the fact that it, it takes, so one of the things that, and, and I think you've done too, I went to command school and when I, when I went to command school, I was fully expecting to know to, to have the answers to, well, how do you do a good sailor of the year board? How do you do a good evaluation? How do you do that? And they didn't talk about any of it. None of it. They talked about like, and, and, and at Navy command school in Rhode Island, you got to, I got to the second week I got to bring my spouse and they were, we interacted in a few classes together. Cause they're like, Hey, your, your husband or your, your spouse in, in this case, cause there was women there too. Um, you know, they're, they're in a different world now, right? They're, they're living in this, in a leadership world and their time is going to be very different. And what I was very surprised about Jay was that there was a little, a couple different buckets than what high performance is, has bring on, but a couple of the same, they added spiritual and financial and educational parts of it all, but they were the same things. Like they weren't focusing on Navy policies and MOUs and uh, you know, SOPs and any of that stuff. They were focusing on me, right? They were focusing on me, the leader and how, a lot of this high performance stuff. And I didn't, that was a big shock. That was a huge shock to me of saying, cause I thought I was just going to get all the keys to the castle about how to be a good, you know, how to handle this situation. And none of it was that it was more about me. And that was, that was, and I think that's important for all of our viewers to understand is that leadership, high performance, whatever is not about having all the right answers to whatever is going to come up in your, in your specific thing. It's not, it's not having the, the, the bus problem. I'm a principal and I have a bus problem. It's not about having that answer, right? It's a, it's the leadership of how you handle everything surrounding that piece of the puzzle. And I think, and I think when you're talking about the psychology, the physiology, the productivity, the person, all those things are, 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 you know, it's the ultimate colored pen, right? I I used remember those old pens. Oh yeah. yeah. four, Four colors, right? My wife used those incredibly through throughout our dental hygiene school <clears throat> it's that right it's it's having this it's having the crayola 64 with the sharpener on the back instead of saying no no here's the here's the specific one because i think all of those things that you talked about i think are all it's all it's all playing in the gray right i i, yeah. I say this all the time of of it's not black and leadership isn't black and white there may be rules that are black and white that you right but but we we operate in the gray continuously all the time and i think I think the high performance thing just helps you again, like anything else, stay focused in the gray, be better at refocusing, be better at, at, at all the stuff you've done. And I I love that. I I really think that that's that's, what I want to add about these six pillars. Like this was from a world's largest study on high performance. They did numerous surveys, um, coaching sessions, group and individual, and they found a hundred different potential indicators or areas that, but they boiled it down to six. And these are the six. It doesn't matter what your race, gender, socioeconomic background is. It had to be malleable across all domains, like military sale. Like, sure. So are these uh, trainable, teachable and coachable? And that's what they boil down to. And these, the, they absolutely work. And that's what we hone in on in these sessions is to help someone improve. Uh, in these areas. And if you improve your performance um, is going, you're going to achieve more and you're going to be more fulfilled along the way. Yeah. And I think that's a great point too, for, because we have listeners from, from everywhere, whether whether they're military contractors who had been in a little bit of time. And I know both Jay's and I's background, right. They're, they're fluttered with some military stuff on there, but, but I think it, there's way more. I think, I think there's a, there's a misnomer out there. There's this very much veil that's out there that believes that, well, you're military, that doesn't apply. And I can tell you 100% uh, for having been out now for a while, it's not about, we get it wrong sometimes, right? And, and Jay and I were talking about this before. The military kind of says, well, it's written in blood, so everything's got to be at this high speed, high level kind of whatever. And the, the truth of the matter is not everything is written in blood in the military at all. Some of it is is very much, you know, like it, it, it's not. It's just, it doesn't work that way. And I think we are we are probably more apt to be able uh, to handle some things because of helmet fires and maybe more stress that handles. But that doesn't mean though that that, that I mean this didn't come from the military, right? Your your point was 
it's 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 applicable to everything across yeah. across all genres, and I think that's that's important. I think to 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 make sure, and, and so is everyday leadership in, in that same sense, right? It's not about a lead, you know a military kind of derivative from it. It's it's about being able to apply these for everybody, right? I mean, yeah. that's the whole point. Absolutely, it's having yeah. having principles and, and frameworks to uh, to lean on, and that's what I appreciate about the Lions Guide is you got people from all walks of life various aspects of, of their, their journey, different organizational sizes and backgrounds. And, and all of these principles will apply to yeah. whatever leadership position you're in. Absolutely. Now, level two dives a little bit deeper into some human drives, right? It, it kind of touches more on, on, on some things that what make, I think they even reference like what makes people feel alive. Talk to me, give me a little bit about that. Yeah, this is the the this is called the, the charge session. So there's 10 human drives and these series a little bit more, a little bit more emotional. You hear the guys out there like, oh, they can hear, I can hear people cringe already, right? Oh, you want to talk about my feelings, right? right? Well, we need to be in touch with, uh, with, with our emotions. And that's really what it is. It's like really ultimately <clears throat> finding that fulfillment in everything that you do. And the 10 human drives are, are control. Um, are you, sometimes we get frustrated because we're trying to control things that we can't control and being able to let go of control and knowing what we need to control. It's competence. It's develop competence. Uh, increasing your competence develops your confidence and makes you feel good. Uh, it's congruence. Are you in alignment with who you are? Do you role model the way? Do you Are you impeccable with your word? One of my favorite books is uh, The Four Agreements. Are you impeccable? Do you do, you do what you say you're going to do? The, the surefire way to, to lose trust in your organization is to tell people to do something and you don't do it. Um, caring. Do you generally care for people? Ooh, the, benevolence. I love you. The reason people leave organizations is because they don't feel cared for or appreciated. So are you doing that? And, and do you know what the love languages are? Do you understand, you know, you, what your team needs? Are, is your level of caring adequate enough? Like, because sometimes we feel that we might be caring for someone or showing appreciation, but because their love language is different or their perception is different, you, you, it's not, it's not, it's not working. And so yeah. being aware of that, um, it's being deeply connected, having connection with other people. We need to feel we're humans. Humans are tribal. We need to feel connected. It's uh, managing change. A lot of human, I mean, we as humans resist change, but as you know, in organizations, like change is coming. Like, so how right. do we manage that change? How do we embrace it? How do we, you know, a lot of people will have, there'll be a lot of negativity. How can we honor the struggle that is the change that's coming and lean into it? Yeah. I just, um, I just sat. So with change, I love, I love change. Cause I just got asked very recently uh, in an interview, I, I, I interviewed for, um, uh, they did a leadership interview of a, of a, a profile and I, and they said, what, what uh, they said, what do you think the future that future leaders need to have? Like, what's the biggest thing that they need to be able to do? And I, I literally talked to a client yesterday and I used it and I said, you know, being able to manage change and, and being able to know that that is a norm now, right. Where we used to talk about, stability, excuse me, stability and the rock. And like, you know, with, even with stakeholders and public companies, they're like, we want stable things. Well, we don't have a stable world. Like our world is yeah. changing at the speed of, of whatever, like the speed of, of that fast. And I said, if you're a leader now that could not only, it's one thing for like to be good and be a high performer and be able to go, I'm ready. Let's change it. Right. Um, let's do it. There's another thing, though, to look at the people who need the personalities that that want stability, that are thinking about their paycheck, that are thinking about the like all like how do you manage that form of change and change management? And Laura, one of our our, our other frequent guests on and comes on the rant with me every month. Um, Laura Corbel, she's a but she her big thing is about benevolence and she's about change fatigue. And she brought that up and she said that is. That is a man, like you need to be able as a leader nowadays to manage change, to be able to, to have that. And, and I truly think if I took anything, all the, all the other stuff stays the same to me, right? In, in, in 10 years, if we were talking, you still need to understand people's feelings. You still need to be able to do that. You still need to understand leadership development, performance development, you know, business development and know that there's differences. And sometimes one is going to outrank the other things. But if you told me, and I, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I think being able to manage change and be good at it, I think is going to separate leaders as we move forward. Right. I mean, I just, oh, I think that's probably. Absolutely. It. I, I yeah. don't know what they're going to call this period in history, but we're undergoing right now, like 
whatever the industrial revolution was like over a hundred years ago, like we're going through that now. Technology yeah. is advancing at a fast rate. We don't even know what currency we're going to be using 20 years from now, right? You got right. Bitcoin, you got all these different cryptocurrencies. That's yep. that blockchain. The blockchain is coming and there's a lot of resistance to it. Yep. I think, you know, I, I'm interested to see how automobiles and vehicles change because I think that we, whether we want it to happen or not, I think the reality is we're going to be getting away from fossil fuels. Sure. And to and there's opportunities in that change as well for business leaders if they take advantage of it, right? Yeah. And so I think you're absolutely right. We're 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 changing at such a fast rate that I don't know that. Uh, I, I think if you're if you're going to put your head your bets on stability. You're going to lose. You're going to yeah, lose. I, th- I mean, you could be stably. I, I looked at it as like, you know, the person, the the ETSJ personality tester that like that that is is the one that's like, I'm going to plan a year in advance to go on my trip to Vegas and I'm going to have 17 different places that we could or could not. Those types of people, I think, are you're going to be like that skill set of being able to be prepared without going overboard, but just being able to, I I've always been a proponent of, of, you know, they used to tell us all the time, well, hurry up and wait. You probably heard yeah. that. Right. And you guys would sit around and, and, and even Laura, and I, and I know this probably has happened to you. How many times have you been extended on deployment and they never told you until the last minute, or you thought you were going, you guys packed. And then also Laura, Laura highlights it beautifully in her book, Sirens. And you know, it's just one of those things where all those things got to me. And I said, well, why aren't we being op-? like, I understand OPSEC and I get all that kind of thing, but like we're intelligent enough as beings at this point, we, everybody has more power. I tell this all the time. Like we have more power in our hands than, than the jets of, of over Vietnam had, right? Like that there's more computing power here yeah. than there was ever in those things. And that's amazing to me that we have this. And if you're able, I think, again, to, to this point, and, and it goes right into this human drive, if you're able to manage that and all the associated things, like you talk about the helmet fires and the, you know, can you manage being the, the clown car? That all has to do with it. All. And I think, yeah. you know, focusing on that, you know, that that's probably going to be what an everyday leadership advanced, in, you know, the second version as we move forward is going to be about change. And, and I think it's just... Yeah. It's just I mean, I mean the, the the years of, you know, That's working good. for an organization for 20, 30, 40 years and getting the golden watch are over. Hell, even even the military just recently, like it was a known thing. You do 20 years, you're going to get your pension. Yep. That's out the door now, too. Like right? they just expect yep. people to change. Your teams are yep. going to change. I, like Everything's changing. Yeah, that, that might have been more more about money. But yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> Probably. There's, there's a driver yeah. for it. I don't know. <laughs> sure. I'm sure but there is. Yeah. Change usually, happened. usually it falls to that. But. Yeah, well, good. Well, listen, that I, I want to skip three because I, I think it's important to get to the le- to, to level four and, or module four. And, and level three really talks about the declaration, which is motivation, and reclaiming. Your yeah, agenda, building defines. confidence, self-esteem, yeah. like taking control. A lot of internals. Yeah. Yep, which is good. Leaders need to be more confident, right? So being absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, solid footing, all of those things. Right. And then yep. and then finally, the, the leadership, right, which yeah. is the, the Let's get into that one. What we're talking about here today. You know the 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 frame the framework of leadership uh, from the High Performance Institute. That's really you know having a compelling vision, envisioning the future, having a compelling uh, vision for not only uh, yourself. You need to have one for yourself, but for your organization. That's believable. I've been in organizations that we had the vision up on the wall, the commander's intent, but no no one believed it. And those were some of the worst, most um, disjointed, unmotivated organizations. But the ones that believed in the mission and felt it and lived it and breathed it every day. Those were the, the, the more motivating organizations to be a part of. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. Um, having, having a compelling vision of the future, um, enlisting, enlisting the help of people, right? Oftentimes we, as leaders, we want to go at it alone or we think that we got it, but we need, sometimes we need to bring on the team. We need to delegate some things and getting good at, at, at delegating things, especially for, Leaders at the lower level, as they expand to that next level, and and they've they've always been in control and letting go of that control. That's that's usually the, the one of the hardest things uh, to do. Then you get comfortable with delegating, but that's a, that's a skill in itself is to learn how to delegate and manage sure. uh, teams and letting subordinates right have have their own vision as part of yours and let them Empowerment. make some mistakes and learn. Yeah. And yeah. absolutely, yeah. I, I just again another client just talked to me the other day and was like. 
uh, they felt guilty. Like there's guilt that comes with like delegation sometimes. And you don't, you don't see it. Sometimes it's natural for us as you know, if you've been, if you've been groomed in an organization that focuses on leadership, which the military does, right. We, we kind of focus on it at every rank about what type of a leader you are at those things. And you get different responsibilities that not, that doesn't always happen in organizations outside. Sometimes it's a, well, now you're here or, or now you're, or, you know, or, or it's been on someone. Cause I think a big thing when you talk about leadership and a big difference between the military and the outside is, is that there's an up or out mentality in the military, right? You're either moving up or you're not, there's not really a stagnation point. And I think that's a big thing for, especially veterans who are getting out is that people could do one job at one level for their entire lives and be completely satisfied where we don't promote that in our, in our world. We promote, look, if you're not leading, I, I don't, I don't need you here. Right. Cause we have, we have quotas. If, if people didn't know congressional quotas to fill that pe- you can only have so many at so many different levels and stuff. Whereas like organizations don't have that. You can be really good at doing one thing at, at doing Excel forms. And that's where you're, you know, and if you love it, man, an organization would, would, would love to keep you there. So how do you, the difference between leadership and motivating that person versus someone who is an up and comer and wants to fast track. Like those are, those are some really unique things within leadership that I think is, uh, you know, when you are enlisting help and you're, you're, you're putting the vision out there, you need to know that you may have a a few different types of mindsets moving forward, which I think is interesting. Yeah. And, and, you know, one thing that I never enjoyed working for, and most people would say the same, they don't like working with micromanagers people that are hovering over their yeah, team, right? Absolutely. And and letting letting just delegating out and and letting your team cuz people I think I mean good leaders want to step up into that role, they want to learn, they want to uh, impress themselves, but nothing saps the motivation from an organization more than in my opinion than than a micromanager. Sure. Um and and I it's just something that um people need to be aware of. Are you micromanaging? If I were to ask your team where they say you're a micromanager, what's that about? And that kind of goes back to like letting go of control. You're, you're being a control freak right now because sure. you think for whatever reason that maybe that they're not going to do a good job. Um, but they'll do a good job. If you give them the vision, you give them the resources, you give them the deadlines, you coach them, give them feedback and you're engaged with them. And uh, people I think will inherently for the most part, do a pretty good job. Yeah, I think if you're <clears throat> one of the things that I've noticed is is so there's a we've talked about this before and I, and I've actually talked to Dale about it and it it'll be interesting. Uh Dale by far between both of us let's just we'll, we'll say it clear is definitely understands the business side of the world probably w- better than Jay and I do. Obviously we've been we're, we're coming from military backgrounds and stuff and and military business is very much different too from the outside world business. There's some similarities but there's differences. I think what's important is that when uh, when you talk about micromanaging, there are times, and and I I have coached I, I coached my my current boss like this and saying, there's times you need to be, you need to get down and you have to like, sorry, this is the time that I have to do this right. I, I have yeah. to be able to have that, and I think this, but your team will understand that if you've empowered them. And you've given them the resources and every single thing that you just talked about, coach them through, give them the, the clear guidance on stuff. When it comes down to it, they'll understand, okay, now this is their time to take over, right? This is the this is the managing port that this person has to yeah. do. It's so much more acceptable at that time that it's not a micro, it's not looked at in that negative light as micromanaging. It's looked at as, as a job. I've, I've said this before to somebody. I look at I look at a leader as just another it's a it's a cog within the like it's a position on the team, but that's no different than you know the person that has to has to do what you would consider the lowest job. Like if we don't have the lowest job done, yeah. then it doesn't matter, right? So I, I as long as you're doing all this stuff in in a huge you know sphere and you're all together. I look at the same thing. It doesn't end up, it doesn't become a micromanaging. It just becomes right. Leadership is what it ends up being. And you're like, Hey, this is the, this is their time to have to do that. And I think as a good, as a good follower, right. Cause I got asked that question too. It's like, what do you think the follower is? 
man, knowing that, okay, we did our part, let's move forward and they're going to do their part. And it becomes almost symbiotic in that, in that sense where it becomes natural. And I, I think that's great. It doesn't become managing. It just becomes, you know, it becomes part of the deal, you know? There there are times of crisis where, yes, you got to step in and like, guys, I don't have time to explain. We're in crisis mode. This is what's happening. And And then I'll explain later. And you just, you know, start giving command to get through it together. And, and but make sure you do. Good followers. What's up? Man, how many people don't do that? What you just said. I'll explain later. Right. Yeah. That's that's where they that's where they screw up, and that's where they make little tiny mistakes that that lead when is when they go. We're in crisis mode. We knew it was coming. Kind of blah blah blah. I'll yeah. explain later and, and detail it. And then they don't come back, and they don't. And then the people don't get the reason why behind it. Those are the little stuff that I look at like every day and go, make sure you do, right? Make sure that you go back. Yep. You take the time. It's the little things like that that make Absolutely. a difference in your communication. I, I totally 100% agree. So what else? What, I mean, you got, there's some definitely some other things that are inside. Yeah, embody. These are, so these are ease to help you memorize. Embody, right? Role modeling the way. You know, we all know people that uh, they say to do one thing and then they're not doing it. And there's nothing more uninspiring than a leader that's, especially if it's like a directive, like, you know, this is what we do around here. And then, and, and then, then they don't do it. Yeah. Um, when it applies so, to everybody. What's that? When it applies to everybody. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So are you, are you role modeling the way and, <clears throat> and high performers, you know, they take a look at that. Um, are they empowering their subordinates? Are you giving, we kind of alluded to that earlier. Like, are you giving them left and right limits because people want to feel empowered? They need resources. They need your support. And are you uh, allowing that to happen? And then um, are you encouraging them? You know, we need we need to be kind of cheered on and appreciated. You know, you need to cheer on the team. So are you encouraging uh, your subordinates and um, letting them, you know, giving them the support and encouragement that they need? Um, are we evaluating, giving good feedback to them? This is something that's definitely overlooked uh, oftentimes. Oh, but yeah. I think feedback is critical. I've had support or I've, I've had leaders in the past where, they may have gave given me like uh, my initial. This is what this is your role. These are your responsibilities. I'm executing. I think that I'm doing a good thing. And then and then you get a year down the line for your annual review, and it's like you you expected to get really good marks, and it was like, oh, I think we were on a completely different like we're like where were yeah. you at, man? Like right. I would have totally. Di- I didn't meet your expectation because you didn't clearly articulate that. Yeah, and oftentimes and that- we have expectations of people but we don't come to agreements with people. And um, that's what it's about giving yeah, evaluation and, and coming to agreements. To me, a lot of times that falls into a couple of categories. One being like, I I'm a leader and I don't like to have uncomfortable, uncomfortable talks. I, I can promise you. And, and, and you've seen this people will appreciate. They will appreciate you correcting them to do it the right way. Cause I think people are inherently, they want to do good, right? They want to impress. They want to, when we look up to leaders, we 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 think about things like trust, loyalty, and respect. And we go, we want those things to fall into place, right? We want those things to happen. We want leaders to lead us. I think we've been frustrated as a country. I don't care if you're red or blue. We've talked about this all the time that we don't we don't take any of those sides. I just want good leadership. Like I don't, yeah. I get that we're gonna swing one way or the other. I get that the world and the cultures are going to be different. And right, sometimes we're more we're more back to roots. Sometimes we need to move. Forward. I get, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I care about you being a good leader within yourselves. And I think, I think people inherently want those people to lead, whether you want to be in that position someday or not. Right. Like that's the difference, right. Again. But I think when you look at it, if you can't go back and go, cause you can't, I talk about it with building foundations of saying, look, you can't go back and tell somebody or get like in your case, like you can't get, at the end of the year, you're like, wait, what, what is it? Why did I get, I got these marks. Why did I get these marks? Like, yeah. I thought I, and you're like, well, why didn't you tell me this six months ago? Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you find out it's because either one, they forgot and just were like, oh, I was fixing it regardless. And cause it was easier to do. Well, that's not, that's not leadership. Leadership isn't, is it letting it go? Because now you end up with these other problems down the road. And yeah. it's such a great point. To, to well, have I don't want to hurt your feelings. It's having the courage right. to have the tough conversation that's necessary. You're doing them a disservice by avoiding the tough conversation. And, and yourself, right? So you're making actually more work for yourself in the long run because now yeah. what are you doing, right? Everybody's got this bad 
this this kind of misnomer behind themselves going, oh man, it's in the back of their minds going, every time I get something from 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 Dale, I gotta correct it or blah blah blah. And you're like, well, just tell them, teach them, right? I, I I'd say it all the time. Well, don't take that monkey on your back when it's their monkey, right? Like I had a good person, a great example of this is I had a I had a a, a mentor of mine who I was like, hey. I need some help writing an evaluation because in the Navy, we, we used to write our own evaluations and turn them in. And it was a lesson because you were, you were, hey, what did I do? And he would be like, and he gave it back to me. And he's like, you know, I'm not going to write it for you. You you write it for you. And I was like, well, but you're 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 the one that's supposed to do my evaluation. Yeah, but no, 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 no. You write it. I'll tell you then. Right. And it was it was a moment for me. And he's like, I'm not going to take your monkey on your back. And do like you're there's a learning process that was involved in it. And it it wasn't it wasn't shirking responsibility for him. It was about a, a lesson. It was a leadership lesson of saying, I'll still have this conversation and tell you why you're wrong, but I want you to make sure that you're seeing it so we're on the same page. And of course, there were guidance and everything else, but it, it's a great, it's a great example of what you're talking about, of just saying, look, you, you gotta be able to have those uncomfortable conversations as yeah. early as possible. So it doesn't, it doesn't linger. I, you know, consistency, transparency, it's just, it's, you know, it, I, I just believe it has to be there. Yeah. And I, and I think that, uh, as I talked to a lot of people, that's a frustration point and that's, uh, for whatever reason, but that's, that's something that needs uh, more attention. Uh, yeah. It needs to be something that's consistent. So absolutely. Absolutely. And then finally, uh, uh, establishing ry rhythms, right? So really, like battle rhythms, uh, some level of you know, we talk about change. We need to we need to have we need to have systems in place, rhythms, because when things go awry, you know, you're only as good as the systems that you have in place, right? And uh, when you don't feel like doing something, you got the system there to kind of keep you keep you in check, and you can make adjustments to the systems. But people need to have a rhythm. They need to know what to expect. And and create that um, that that machine, if you will, right? So yeah. it just makes uh, makes everything more efficient. We talk about that a lot, militarily wise. That's a very battle rhythm is obviously something we've that I mean, it, it literally comes from from where we were. But I I would tell you, I have said that more to clients and to to teams and to companies to say, listen, what is your what is your rhythm? What is your everyday norm that you guys do? What are what is accepted? What's unaccepted? Does it go by the rule book? Does it not? Like, are you guys okay with that type of a thing? Whatever it is, and you find that they that concept isn't necessarily in it by itself something that people grasp, right? It's like this is just what happens, right? I, I get it, but now put that into a context and put it into its own you know, it, it, its own bubble and say to yourself, does it need to change, right? How can, if it's normal and it's good, great, no problems. But then when something goes awry, can you look back at a battle rhythm and, and, and Swiss cheese model it and say, okay, here's where we, you know, here's where this happened. I, I think it's a great thing because you're right. I think, although we talk about change so much and we've talked about it, that it's happening, Stability is, I mean, you could, you could be state, like there's stability with through it all, right? Like you can have change a lot with having a, a battle rhythm, a, a daily battle rhythm that people yeah. understand that, that again, if you take little disruptions, no problems, right? People understand it, but they get how it's going to be. It's a, we know we have a Monday morning powwow. We know we have yeah. you know, whatever it's going to be for yourself. Yeah. And, and in the, in the military, mm -hmm. you know, it just could be the same for business. You know, there were a lot of times where, Units would be falling short. Like they, they'd be maybe falling short on admin. They'd be falling short on maintenance. Um, they would always want to do training because that's the sexy stuff. That's the stuff right. we want to get after. Sure. But they're well, they're falling short on some of these other systems. And when I would create a battle rhythm for the organization to be like, okay, usually you're you're operating in one of these four buckets. You're either doing maintenance, you're doing supply activities, you're doing administrative stuff. Uh, an aspect of that could be legal. That could be another system in itself. Um, or you're, you're training, you're, you're, you're preparing for training, you're executing training. So everything that you're doing is in one of those buckets and in a business, it should be the same way. Are you doing sure. sales? Are you do, you know, what, what, what is that for, for your organization? Is it and can I see that in a yep. calendar that way yep. you don't miss anything. Do you have time earmarked for those evaluations and feedback? It's yep. part of your admin, your human resource yep. stuff. Um, so yeah, do you have systems in, in, in place? And, um, and I'll be, I'm surprised with how many people, this kind of goes back in your personal life too. How many people are shooting from the hip, uh, in regards to their daily schedule 
like a, open up, let me see your planning systems. And it's like, it's like blank. Yeah. And like you're managing a team of people and you're getting frustrated well, it's because you're unorganized. Right. And uh, so that's, yeah. that's what it's about. It, refining those systems for yourself and for your organization. And I think a great point to that is, is that it doesn't have to be like, you're not promoting one system or another, like whatever your system is or whatever works for you, if it works for you and it, you're getting things and you're accomplishing stuff, like maybe it's tweaking what you're maybe it's just enhancing your own personal system. Like if you looked at my, it's, it's two whiteboards. Like it's not, you know, everybody else uses computers and I, I love my boards cause I just get to see them and I can just turn my head and go, yep, I'm going to do that. Yep. I got to do this, you know, and it, I can walk over to my whiteboard at the end of the day and, and, you know, before I go to bed and just go, what do I got to do tomorrow? And I write my little check boxes and yeah. Hey, JT's streamcast post. I got to write packs of school. I got to, you know, I got to write a client. I got to finish a honey baked hand. Like it's all there, you yeah. know, and, but it's simple. It's, it, it doesn't keep it simple. It, yeah, absolutely. And that's huge. The art of simplicity is part of everyday leadership. And so, um, and I think that's great, great segue. Again, we always do great segues here. Um, I think this is between Jay and I, and if we've had a little bit of time to talk about it, um, you know, the, the high performance uh, coaching curriculum and the everyday leadership benchmark curriculum really has overlaps. And at Lions Guide, we really try to, and I think Jay and I can attest to it. And I know if Dale came on and and the, the third post to this foundation is really the business development side that we're working on now. And that's really, they all have, they're probably 70% in their own silos and then there's about 30 percent, which is overlap because i i jay you and i will agree with this i, I know when we talked about it is you can't be a, a great leader a great everyday leader the, the the leader that your people really need and want without having some level of performance right like yeah. some you have to have now listen if it's all 43 of your cogs are you going to be perfect on I, no i don't think there's an expectation right and i talk about it and I, you'd probably agree you're juggling balls, right? You're juggling glass balls and rubber balls. And some of them you can't, you know, you can't drop. And the other ones are, Hey, I can drop that one. And I know it's going to bounce back or whatever. And so when you look at those things, how do you look at, I mean, just from your advantage point, how do you, why is it so connected of being this perform high performance and just being a performer in general, right? Whatever you're trying to strive for and leadership, why are those things so connected? Do you think? Just to echo what I hear Dale saying all the time is you got to lead yourself first. Sure. Um, and if you are performing better, that's going to that's gonna blend into every aspect of your life because you're not just leading at work. You're leading yourself. You're leading your family. You're leading in the organizations that you're volunteering in and the organizations that you're, that you're leading or, or working in. And I think that, um, you know, the best leaders have that level of self-awareness where they're sharpening their edge. I think about Abraham Lincoln's quote all the time. One of my favorites. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend four hours sharpening my saw. This right. is where you sharpen your saw. Yeah. And this is how you, when you engage in these, you're going to not only achieve more, but you're going to find that level of happiness and, and fulfillment. You know, one of the, one of one person that it still blows my mind to this day, but Robin Williams, right? Here's a guy who's highly successful. High, achieved a lot, right? He was a he was a comedy actor, um, had a top sitcom. That was you know that wasn't enough. He went on into uh, getting into movies, and not only that, he was known for a comedian. But now he started making dramas and was like yeah. won all these awards, right? Guy was just dominant. Wanted a wonderful wife, a, a, a family, and, and created that. But at the end of the day, he was unfulfilled. Absolutely, we don't know why, but I would suspect that he didn't have balance, and he he was there was something. He wasn't, he's probably putting everyone else first because that's the kind of, he had a servant attitude, but there was something missing. And there's a lot of leaders out there that are playing that character. I've certainly been there and you're missing out on your potential and you're missing out on enjoying life by not engaging in that and not addressing those issues. Yeah. And I, I think I, if you do that, you'll be more effective leader he, and you're gonna have a better he, life. He's a great example of, and, and, you know, may, it may not seem like that's a leader, right? Like it doesn't come across necessarily, but when you looked at it as maybe a leading actor, and I don't mean that in the term of just within the movie, but within the community, people yeah, yeah. could look at Robin Williams and, and I know I've seen, and you probably have too, you've seen his, his very serious faces and they have it all the time on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever of the memes of saying, 
you just, excuse me, you don't know what's happening inside, inside someone, right? In that, that kind of a tone. I think it's a great example that people, people work so hard. And I, I've had numerous, numerous talks with, with former bosses and, and current client, everything that they feel guilty about taking the time to work on themselves. And, and I, I related to the, there's a watering can meme out there that, that has a bunch of flowers, the watering cans there. And there's a hose in the back of the watering can that's filling the, that hose is you of self-performance that hose is that this high performance and working on yourself and sharpening the sword, because there's no way you can sprinkle that water on all those flowers and get everybody else to grow, grow a business, grow a people without, without yourself being at your highest peak. And, and I think I've, I've seen that. I try to dictate that. And, and it's a hard concept for yeah. people sometimes to understand about, well, no, I, I got I can't take time away because people are so servant, right? You, you find people that are a lot more servant focused and it's not about them and they realize it's about other people. And then you have to say to them, wait, hold on. It's almost a, a you know, this, this huge conundrum for them to go, wait, well, well, I mean, it should be as simple. You and I realize it, right? You went through it. You went through some dark stuff. I, I mean, you you taught, you just know I can't do the best. You think you can because you're putting so much effort, but you can't, you really can't be the best version of yourself uh, or for your team if you're not, if you're not trying and striving. And, and it's, it's admit it, right? Let's, I mean, we'll kind of end this way, but, and I know you wanted to, to, to kind of say that, but you got to work on yourself and and kind of face your own demons of what they were you alluded to it at the beginning with your with your history but you know end on this is is you 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 yourself are a shining example Dale's a shining example of realizing i you know looking in the mirror and saying i got to work on me before i can go work on other people to give them my best version right and and yes it may be running parallel paths but but i mean just just uh, you know, I'll give you the floor to end on that that kind of note because I think it's so important. Yeah, I mean, your personal growth and, and and your own development is so critically important because if you are, it's hard to pour from an empty cup. And people, they 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 feel it's selfish to take care of themselves, but you're like you said, you're depriving everyone else of the best version of yourself, which yep. in turn you're not showing up to your highest potential as a leader. And so it's counterintuitive, but it's absolutely important. Right. And stepping away to take care of yourself is is critical. And I think the 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 work that we do here, I mean, if you're someone that's listening to this, like this personal growth and development work, it's not something that you do once in a while. It's not something you do for an event. It's it's a lifestyle. It's an ongoing campaign to get better. And here's the deal: you're never going you you can you're never going to peak out. Like you're never going to peak. Um, but it's so incredibly important to, uh, to, to do the work. And that's what I, I am proud to be part of the Lions Guy team here because that's what we're doing here. And uh, we need leaders. We need leaders and role models of character. Honored to be part of the team to help people achieve that. Absolutely. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, well, listen, um, so great way to end that. Absolutely perfect. I will give you another shot right here. What do you want to plug? What do you want to plug? You got some time. What do you Man, I'm so. Um, I, if you go over to uh, the the resources page, I've got a, a presentation specifically on the uh, pillars of high performance, so you can check that out. I've got workshops that are getting ready to kick off. I've done a couple. Uh, uh, I did two last week. I'm going to do probably two more next week because they were so popular. And so, if you're ready to take the next step, you want to learn more about these pillars and how they can improve your life and leadership, then uh, let's get let's get to work. Yeah, awesome. And then to plug uh, to plug my own, uh, listen, when you're doing that and you can do them in parallel, obviously, like yeah, absolutely, about everything else you should be. Um, how do you how do you, right taking taking those things and applying them to everyday leadership? And so the leadership course is out there. Uh, becoming a member member of the Lions Guide, you can go watch the overview right now, and you can also pull down the ready sheet just like you can for for Jay's edition. And um, you know, for us from the director's standpoint, listen. As always, we love for you stopping by. We absolutely uh, 
have, have loved this format to be able to come to you guys uh, and gals and talk to you guys specifically about some cool stuff. Um, and as always, the flip side's always, it's, it's raw, it's real. We're going to give you what we really believe and what we've really seen and how it can really help you. Um, so as always, thanks for stopping by on this Thursday. Next week, Dale and I are on. Uh, we're going to review the book, Start With Why, Simon Sinek. So our first Simon Sinek one, uh, which is super important. I know it applies to you. But really getting into that that really human emotional side of what you're doing something for. Uh, because people want to know, right? We talked about it before. It's it's people want to know why they're doing something. They want to know that their leaders in front of them have some purpose driven behind them. Start with why Simon does a great kind of does a great version of that uh, with that. So we'll be back on next week to review that and uh, new stuff coming. So sign up for those workshops on everybody else. We'll see you guys all on the flip side. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, have a good one. And flip out. <laughs>